Put your celebration hats on, people. The Bulls are back in town. Oh, my goodness. A back above that year-to-date anchored VWAP. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, is that because of all these short-dated options squeezing the market higher? Uh, I don't know. We'll talk about it on today's Stock Market Brief. We're going to get into Apple, Tesla, Amazon, a bunch of different charts here, too, as well, to get an idea of what's going to be the next move for the overall markets. We're going to first look at what can potentially shake the markets up. Well, first and foremost, we got to look at our economic calendar. So what kind of econo drops are coming soon? Well, the red ones right here are the major impacts to the markets, which are rated by trading economics as three stars. Everything else on here is a two star. What do we got? We got S&P Global Composite PMI Flash Manufacturing. We got GDP coming out. We got Core PCE. So these are things to be aware of that when the time comes, right? These are Pacific Standard Time, just so you know. Um, these are like, so 5.30 a.m. is an hour before the market opens for Pacific Standard Time. I know people use the Eastern Standard Time, but whatever. You know, I'm on the Pacific, I'm on the Pacific side. So it is what it is, okay? It is what it is. So understand and pull up this calendar and be aware when these hit the tape, they can obviously bring in more volatility into the markets. So not crazy amount of stuff going on next week as far as macro data drops, but we do have a lot of anticipated earnings. I'm really interested here to look at DR Horton to see how the housing market is going to go, right? This is a huge builder. So before open, DR Horton on Tuesday, that'll be interesting to, at least for me, because I'm in the market for a home and I'm also selling mine. If we take a look at just a weekly chart, what do we got going on? Well, price action, despite seeing the bulls stepping back in on Friday, we had the week close at down 0.66%. Okay. Now the NASDAQ, finished up, right? So tech stock, growth stocks are really seeing a bounce and we'll talk about that later. But I want to pay attention to here to a couple moving averages. Uh, uh, first and foremost, the 50 period weekly moving average. You can see here it's been holding his resistance, holding his resistance, and we're budding our head up somewhat close to it. So in order to feel really more confident, we want to see price get above that. We still have a series of lower highs and lower lows, okay? As it stands right now, we are putting in a higher low. So in order to get a little bit more bullish, we would want to see price take out right around that 4,100, 4,200 area. Now, this is a chart that I shared not too long ago about the year-to-day anchored VWAP. We said yes, or on the prior video, if price closes above it, that's more bullish. Well, price got above it. It definitely closed above it. But if you were paying attention when we got above that high, that offered a great opportunity for a push higher in the markets. Now, I also stated that this right here is an evening star reversal type pattern. And we had follow through this day and it wouldn't really, you know, this is still a valid uh, reversal pattern up until the point where it takes out this high. So I would say that it's still still possible to see more downside action. To be more bullish here, you'd want to see that obviously taken out. I would like to see it come up and consolidate and then break through. That would be a little bit more stronger, but we don't always get what we want. Now, if we take a look at the S&P 500 on the daily time frame, zoom down a little bit more, you can see the overall trend a little bit clearer that we pointed out on the weekly time frame, right? A series of lower highs and series of lower lows there. You can see this right here was a, a higher low, and this is a higher low. So that's positive, but we still have a high and a lower high. So really, we'd want to see price take out here once again and price take out here. That would mean that we're getting above this downsloping trend line that everybody is watching and above that 200 day moving average, which by the way, we'd have to hold that for a while because it's still declining. Prior to this episode, we also discussed when price was coming back up, it seemed more likely for price to come right back down to 3,900. And the reason why is because that has been acting as a complete magnet over and over and over again. And we were right. It did come right back into this area and we started to bounce it from it. So there's a couple areas that I'm watching. 3,900 to the downside. So if we start breaking down there, we can see more sell side. And if we continue this uh, push up higher, um, I think that 4,200 is a, you know, a, a possible. It's a very possible, especially if we start closing above this previous high. Now, the weekly expected moves will post in a screenshot version at the end of this video. But as you can see here, it's just below 4050 and it's right around 3900. But I'll get the exact numbers momentarily. If we take a look at the 15 minute time frame, we did get above that year to date anchored VWAP, which we already discussed. It's above a five day moving average, but the five day moving average is still declining at this moment. Okay. As far as the expected moves go, it's 40310 to the upside. And then 388.66 to the downside. Now, if you're like, what's an expected move? This is making no sense to me. The expected moves um, are based off of the options market. It's forward-looking risk, right? It's implied 
volatility, meaning what is the volatility in the future versus historic volatility, um, you know, what has already taken place in the past. So the market is able to price this in and it gives us a range at which we think that the market's going to be. And if you think of this as a bell curve, right, one standard deviation, boom, boom, is within this range. And that means 68% of the time, price closes in within here. Now, if you remember last week, it started here, okay? And then we saw some massive sell side. This right here, basically the price broke down from the weekly expected move, came right back into it, and then it started moving back in. So 68% of the time, it closes back in it. And the S&P 500 did just that last week. So there is a 68% probability, once again, that price, closes this next week between 403 and 388.66. So if price gets outside of it, it creates opportunities where you can say, hey, price is really far down or price is far up. I think that price, I can take a stab for it to pull back down into here. Okay. It's just based off probabilities there. And by the way, yes, there are such thing as two standard deviation moves. So one standard deviation, two standard deviations. There's even three standard deviations. But the S&P 500, almost near 80% of the time, finishes within this range. I know it's 68% of the time, uh, but uh, the S&P 500 um, is a very liquid product and it has been significantly more accurate. Now, as I look at this chart, right, we saw a strong move. We've seen strong moves. They get faded. We've seen strong moves to the downside. They get faded. We've seen strong moves to the downside. get faded. Strong move, strong move, right? These very volatile type moves. So if I put in the RSI, I want to show you here that we are in that overextended territory. And when we get overextended, you know, prior times, the price action kind of pulls back and then oscillates back down to oversold conditions, right? Last week, we discussed that, hey, it would have been nice to see this price come a break this low and then have a positive divergence. That would have been nice, but we didn't get that, but we did cross above it and we started moving higher, okay? So as it stands out, you want price to, like if it pulls back, right? RSI comes back in, you'd wanna see price. That would be nice, right? Price to pull back and then consolidate under this, this prior high right here and then eventually break out. If it does that, I would say the target would be right up to the upper weekly expected move and even right here at this prior swing high. Okay, I don't like I don't like getting in right at these like overextended territories. Okay, be, it doesn't mean that it can't gap up and go still. Right, overextended could stay overextended for a while. However, I personally I personally like things like you know to set up something like that. Oh, it pulls back, scares some people out. Oh, it puts in a higher low, and then all of a sudden it consolidates, and boom, we see a big nice pop. That's very similar to what happened actually right here in this little tight consolidation before seeing a break up higher. Now, if we take a look at year to date performance at the eleven sectors that actually make up the S&P 500. Consumer discretionary, sorry, con communication services is now up a whopping 10.65%. That's interesting to me. XLY is consumer discretionary. Now, we're heading into a recession. At least, you know, that's my belief, my opinion that we're heading into a recession. There's many different indicators and many things that lead me to believe that, right, that we're going to have a recession in the very near future. But uh, it's, I find it interesting that consumer discretionary here is doing really well and consumer you know, communication services is more cyclical. However, I want to take a look at both of these sectors and then get into the year-to-date performance of these sectors. Because if we're moving into a recession, typically, typically you have more of safety type trades going on, risk off behavior, but we're not seeing that here at the early start of 2023. So I'm gonna try my best to explain why that may be and how we can position ourselves. Because as it stands right now, things are bullish, so you gotta remain somewhat bullish as far as the tape goes. Um, if you're in the Patreon group, you've probably seen me post a whole heck of a lot of bullish setups. Now, if we go on to this page right here, I'm gonna look at first communication services. So what makes up the XLC? Well, the XLC is made up of these top 10 holdings and they hold a lot of weight. So I'm just gonna look at the top three. Oh, well, the top right here is just Google, right? Two different tickers, G-O-G-L and G-O-O-G, and then Meta, all right? This makes up for you know over 30% of the XLC. So if I look at Meta, oh, wow, okay. Well, Meta has been from 380, so basically in 2022, and it hit a low right before 2023. And what we see here is price is just bouncing. It's still below a declining 200 day moving average. Interesting. Okay, so yeah, it's it, to me, when I look at this type of stuff and I see, oh, okay, people coming into communication services, we're getting, all we're seeing right now is a bounce in an overall downtrend. 
Now, price did expand to the downside. And now what I see here, along with these little flags and these tight consolidations, which we called out um, in the Patreon group there too as well. But I am seeing price is contracting, getting tighter within a rising wedge structure in a downtrend. Now, I still think that there could be a possibility that we can scream up higher. And where would that be? Well, there's a supply drop over here. Prior support can become resistance. So if price wants to push up higher, this may be an area of contention to watch out for if you are trading meta, which is 160. Otherwise, this looks like, for zooming out, could be a bear flag that can very well go retest a low on a breakdown. Now, it is above a 20-day, 50-day, but like I said, it is still below that 200-day declining moving average, and there's a little bit of a negative divergence there on the RSI, negative divergence on the histogram. The next big one was Google. I'm going to just look at G-O-O-G-L, and you can see here into 2023, Right? We, were just, we were at a low. We were basically at a low for 2022 of the bear market. So all we're seeing here at the beginning of the year is a reflexive bounce, but we haven't really gone anywhere. We're still within a chopping range below a 200-day moving average. So where can this potentially go where it can meet some resistance? Well, you can see right here, support, 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 support. Well, support can become a level of resistance, resistance. So if price squeezes up a little bit higher, Boom, 100 to 105 into that range into back a declining five-day moving average. Now, we did have a breakaway gap right here. I don't know if we're going to see continuation or whatever the case may be, but I just want people to be aware that it wasn't long ago. We were right here at a low and everything was bearish. Now we're getting a reflexive bounce. Remember, FOMO is real in the markets, and I want people to be aware of just the reality that if this was actually the bottom for the entire year and moving forward, you're, you're five days separated, you know, five, 10, 10 days separated from the bottom. So there's still a lot of opportunity if you are bullish in this market. Now, if we go back here, um, I want to point out once again, the consumer discretionary sector. So XLC was at the top. XLY right now, year to date, is the second performing sector. If we look at the top 10 there, we'll make that up. Amazon, Tesla, Home Depot, Nike, and so forth down the list. I want to pay attention to Amazon and Tesla. Amazon is one that I've been watching for quite some time. Once again, if you were in the uh, Patreon group, this is one that I shared. This little uh, you can see by the volume right here and this move, this was why I was looking into a support zone right back into 80 to 85, and it pulled into that area perfectly. And we saw last week, you know, about a 14% move. There was a positive divergence right in the MACD, positive divergence in the RSI, and now we're starting to see a strong move. So Amazon overall looks, it looks pretty good. It looks like it could take a breather, but as long as it can hold 80, 85 at this particular point in time, that could be a really good sign where we can actually see some further more upside okay so that is one that i'm paying attention to there but the other side of this is tesla and tesla like i said is going to be reporting earnings here next week and i want to call out that this is you know, it could be bullish or bearish right here and I'll, I'll show the bearish case and i'll show the bullish case so first we'll look at the bearish case so first you know that the trend is down right lower highs lower lows and you can see that right through here on the ADX. So in the ADX, you have a strong trend if when you're above that 30 marker. Anytime you're above that 30 marker, it's a pretty strong trend. And this right here is called the Holy Grail setup. And the Holy Grail setup is a very strict trade. I made a YouTube short about it. But you can see here on a move, and this works in both bullish and bearish context, but on a bullish move to the or bearish move to the downside, it came back above the 20 period. Um, Sorry, I'm going to use this little uh, 20 period EMA, okay? And when it came back up there, that's a pullback within a downtrend, and then it cracked the prior high, and then it flushes down. You play it to the prior swing low, and then that's what it did, right? And then right over here, it did the same thing. You had an ADX that was above 30, okay? And then it broke down to that bear flag, and what we're seeing right here is you have an ADX. It's above 30, okay? It pulled back to the 20 period EMA. Now, what you do is you would technically, the entry would be right around here, which it would have already hit, okay? And then you would play for a, another move to the swing low. However, the stop loss would be right above the prior high of this red candle. So this red candle right here represents, you know, a couple of things. One, that would be the stop out if you are playing this from a bearish perspective, and then you would have to restructure the trade from a bearish perspective. However, it could mean that, A, if we get above this prior um high right here of that red candle or i mean black candle it has the possibility to start shooting up further because there's not much 
volume that has been traded through this strong move to the downside. Okay, so if we start breaking up through this 136 to 140 level, that opens the door to around that 160 kind of range here where we saw prior support and then it cracked down. So there's still possibility that we get more movement to the upside and the 20 period EMA starts curling back up. That is always a possibility. Some people might look at this big flush to the downside and see all this volume like that was a capitulation move. That was marking a bottom. A lot of times bottoms get undercut like that and then you start to see a move or a double bottom form but overall this could very well be a bear flag so be aware of that if it starts breaking through the low of this prior trading day candle the uh, I think it was Thursday that could be a bearish sign where we can go try to retest those lows if we get above that high of this day that opens the door for Tesla um, now if I look at a year-to-date uh, heat map, you can see there is a lot of FOMO in the air. You got moves like Amazon, right? In a single week, it was up 13 or 14 percent. You have Tesla up, you have Google up, Meta's up, NVIDIA is up a whopping 22 percent. Apple's up 6, 6.11 percent. Microsoft hasn't even budged. Okay, but I want to like really, if you have FOMO, I want you to pay attention to this slide. This is something that I posted on Twitter. A lot of people didn't quite understand my point here, but 15 tr tr trading days ago, only 15 days ago, a whole whopping 15 days ago, okay, trading days. That was the closing low for the NASDAQ composite. The NASDAQ composite is important composite to watch. All right, you want the NASDAQ composite to be trending higher, you know, to be more bullish. And as it stands right now, yeah, we've just seen 2023 basically go just straight up. All right. So I want you to note that it's, we're only 15 days separated from this closing low. So if you are bullish and this was a strong move, you're, you're, you could be patient. You have a lot of time. All we're seeing right now is the Nasdaq composite below a declining 200-day moving average, and we're just in a chopping range right now. And that could re could resolve to the upside, getting above 11,600 11, 11, and back above that 200-day. But it can also resolve to the downside if this 10,350 level is taken out to the downside. So right now, we're just in a sideways chopping range. And if we take a look here at the BP composite uh, bullish percent index, you can see that it is overextended from an RSI perspective, which typically means that it gets faded and it comes typically back down to the lower range at some point. Now, to pay attention to this, the 10-year yield. The 10-year yield here is an important asset to watch because the rate at which this moves can have a heavy Im impact on growth stocks, mainly those that are trading within an NASDAQ deposit. And I'll show you. Now, the first and foremost, we had a prior area of resistance. Resistance can become a level of support. And you can see here, this last trading day on Friday, we we're up 2.56%. But yet the market still ended up rallying, especially big tech names. Now, typically when you get a big move in 10-year yield, why bonds come off, we've seen tech names actually get hit. That wasn't the case here. However, if this starts to break out further, that could be what puts pressure on the NASDAQ composite. So let me point this out to you. If I show you a side-by-side -side comparison of the 10-year yield up top, the NASDAQ composite at the bottom, what do you notice when the 10-year yield has a rapid rate at which it's to the upside? Oh, look at the NASDAQ composite it falls to the downside. Okay, it's not rocket science. The rate at which it moves makes a big difference. The 10-year yield falls rapidly to the downside. <gasps> wow, the NASDAQ composite goes up. Now the 10-year yield rips to the upside. <gasps> wow, the, the NASDAQ composite goes down, right? And so forth and so forth and so forth. So as the 10-year yield's pulling into this prior area, if we do get a bounce to the upside, it is very likely that this range that the NASDAQ composite is in can come right back down to the lower range. Okay, so be aware of that. Okay, if we continue on and we're looking at, we looked at these two sectors, XLC and XLY, and kind of broke it down of some important names and how they're still on overall a downtrend. But the reason why they're doing so good year to date is because they were crushed into 2022 at, all the way to the end. And then all of a sudden we're seeing this reflexive bounce. Is it the bottom? I don't know if it's the bottom. It's a bottom as it stands right now. But I want to also call out the bottom three sectors. What is going to happen next in the market? And I'm paying very close attention to healthcare, utilities, and consumer staples because from a macro standpoint, we still haven't had anything really change. It still feels like it could be a risk off type behavior, but I'm going to tell specifically what it is that I'm looking for in order to see these actually start to move up. Let me fix that. Um, there we go. Okay. So I want to first look at healthcare. So healthcare right here is pulling down. Okay. It's a gradual slope below, below a 50 day moving average, below the 20 and it's getting held up. 
You can also see on from a relative strength standpoint, which we've talked about in prior videos, it's below that 50 period EMA, which is not a good sign. You want to see this back above it. There is a positive divergence in the MACD histogram, um, but we are pulling into a prior area of once, right? Resistance can become a level of support. And we did finish the day up on Friday. Perhaps we get some sort of reflexive bounce, but we still have a lot of price action to get through. Um, now, healthcare is one that I really like looking at, uh, like... The, the pharmaceuticals have been doing all right there. Um, stuff like McKesson, MCK, that is one that I'm pretty interested in. But I'm not going to get too much into that in this video. If I look at the cumulative line, advanced decline line, you can see that we are putting in lower lows in the price action. However, the cumulative line is actually moving higher. So it's telling me that the advances, there's more advances than there are declines, which tells me that's a positive divergence. So to see healthcare maybe take off to the upside is a possibility here. So that's one on my radar. Okay. Consumer staples, it cracked through this prior area of support, right? So now we did see somewhat of a, a nice uh, bounce, uh, you know, 0.78%. Woohoo. Um, this resistance, right? Prior resistance was support and it got broken down. So you'd want to see it reclaimed here. More, more importantly, though, I want to look at this chart. This is the chart that led me to believe that 20 in 2022, last year, consumer staples could be one of the stronger assets to be holding, at least from a relative standpoint. And it was. Okay, It was one of the top three sectors in 2022. Uh, energy was the obviously the big one. But this relative strength line down here was putting in a lower low, while the rate of change was putting in a higher low, as well as the RSI. Now, if you remember a couple of weeks ago, if you're new here, whatever the case is, you know, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and you can keep, you know, follow along. But right here, the RSI was putting in a lower high where the relative strength line between X consumer staples and SPY was putting in a higher high. And then the same thing with the rate of change. The rate of change was putting in a lower high while the relative strength line was putting in a higher high. Okay, so that is a negative divergence and it's playing out to the downside. The, rel uh, the rate of change has crossed down through zero. RSI still has room to go to potentially get oversold to the downside. So in my opinion, what I would like to see is this rate of change go back to positive and I would like to see the RSI get back down below 30 or start to turn back up through 50 to give me more confidence that consumer staples may be taking back a turn. Because as we know, and I'll go into the zones momentarily, these have been getting beaten down, but they're at the lower end of those zones. Last one is consumer st uh, uh, consumer utilities. Sorry, utilities. Getting confused here. I want to call out this last trading day. Friday was a nice hammer candle closing at the high, and it's holding this current level of support. Now, if it cracks down through there, that could be pretty wild to the downside, right? So be careful of that. We're below all those key moving averages, so utilities has to start stepping up right now, or it could be you know not good. Which means that hey, if utilities fall, if consumer staples fall, where are people going to put their money? Well, and what's holding up? It's going higher. That would be more of a risk on type move. Okay. So yeah, RS line broke down through that EMA 50. Uh, overall here, if I if I if I bring up this chart, this is looking at the rate of change between utilities and spy. This is part of Michael Guyad's beta rotation strategy. And right now you can see that is in risk off territory. This rate of change has been pointing straight down. It's actually a five point down 5.57% on a four week basis. Okay. So what I would like to see is this to start turning back up and even cross up back up through zero. Cause if that happens, I think that will be when utilities start to see a stronger move to the upside. Cause be aware, like we're starting to see it kind of go down, right? Right. Market's moving down. Well, what's the rate of change doing? Well, the rate of change has been going down through zero. So on the flip side of that, you know, to see more of a risk off behavior, you'd want to see the rate of change positive between utilities and SPY. Now, the last thing that I want to call out is the zones. On the zones, you can still see consumer staples and utilities are more defensive sectors. They are at the bottom of their zones, which tells me that we can see some sort of reflexive bounce in the near time. So this video is based off of, okay, so where what could be the next move? Well, the next move very well can be risk on assets taking a breather. Doesn't mean that they have to sell off. And, and risk on assets to perform a little bit better. So that is still something I'm paying attention to for the last three or four trading days. Doesn't mean to scale in or buy YOLO into these things because if we do have a real risk on type move, we can see a very strong move in the overall markets. Now, um, 
just to quickly recap, okay, where would you get more bullish? Well, or uh, bearish, you'd get bearish back below that year to date anchor VWAP. Um, so that is one thing that I'm paying attention to. Um, as far as bullish goes, um, as long as we stay above that five day moving average on the shorter time frame, I still think that we have some room to breathe down. So I'm looking for something like that to set up. If you want to look at the weekly expected moves, I post them all in obviously this Discord and Swing Trader platform. Um, it's nine bucks a month. It's incredibly cheap. You can save 16% annually. So it's seven bucks. You pay 90 bucks. You get a year of a bunch of different trade ideas, weekly expected moves, zones. Um, I track like 40 products there. Uh, all my stock market indicators, I keep loading more into there. And then you get access obviously to the awesome community there. If you take a look at the expected moves, this is, I'll point it out, this right here is the lower expected move, or sorry, the um, higher expected move. Let me just draw an H. This is the lower weekly expected move. And this is the plus or minus expected move. This is right here is the closing. So if you go ahead and screenshot this, this is for the S&P 500 the SPY, which we went over, then you got Q's down here, IWM, and then DIA, which is the Dow Jones, the diamonds right there, okay? So that's all I got for you on today's episode, everybody. See you later.